we've looked at Zooey file managers. If you don't know what that means, go and check out that video. We've looked at regular GUI file managers. We've looked at file managers that inspired dumb movie file managers. And we've even looked at a regular TUI like, say, LF or Ranger. And today, we're looking at this. I don't know how to explain what you're seeing right now. This is TUI FI Manager, which is the most on-the-nose name I have ever seen. It is a GUI style file manager for your terminal. But to my surprise, this is not as ridiculous. It's still ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as it might initially seem. From my experience, it is incredibly snappy. Like, I have no complaints with how quick this application runs. But if this was just a weird GUI style file manager in a terminal, I wouldn't be talking about it. The reason why we're here is the mouse support. You can use it like a GUI file manager. There is even a context menu. So it has both full mouse support, at least what is generally available in a terminal. You can't like drag and select a group, for example, and also full keyboard support with hotkeys on basically every action. Check out the GitHub for a full list of those keys, along with the extra keys when you are running it inside of Termux. Because yes, that is one of the intended use cases of this application. I don't know whether I'd want to use it on Termux, but the option is certainly going to be there. Now, as you would expect, accessing the context menu with your mouse is done with a right click. Now, you're supposed to be able to go and press Alt down, and that will open the context menu as well. As you can see, actually you might not be able to see because it's very small, it's trying to do a search on the symbol being printed out instead. I don't know if this is an issue with the keyboard that I'm using, or if it's a problem with the application itself. But when you have the context menu open and you press Alt down, then it does close it. So I'm not 100% sure. But this context menu includes what you would generally expect to be there. Open, cut, copy, paste, delete. Be very careful with the delete because it deletes it with no confirmation prompt whatsoever. Rename, reload. Reload is going to reload the entire folder in case you've deleted something in another application. New file, new folder, and then properties. Now you probably notice as we go and move the mouse, it doesn't highlight the thing we are currently on. If you cycle through this with your arrow keys though, it is going to highlight it. I don't know if that's a limitation of what can be done in the terminal, but if there is a way to do this, highlighting would be nice. Now, one other problem is this properties button. I don't think it does anything because every time I press it, nothing happens. Maybe it's doing something somewhere. Maybe the information being shown down the bottom here is already the properties, in which case I don't know why there's a button for it. But as it stands, it seems like it does nothing. Also, with this deletion, this is a deletion, not a trash. If you delete a file, the file is going to be gone. Be careful what you use delete on. You can also take actions on multiple files at once. This right now can only be done with the mouse. There is no way to select multiple things with your keyboard. And we can't go and drag to grab things. What we do is hold down control and we can select as many of these as we want. One thing that isn't clear though is the actions you can take on the multiple files. So you might think, oh, all of these things are here. If I go and press open, for example, it's gonna open all of them. It doesn't do that. Or if I try to do something like a rename, it's going to rename all of them. Once again, it doesn't do that. The only actions that work on multiple things are cut, copy, and also delete. Now, before I briefly mention searching, unlike many terminal file managers out there, it doesn't have a dedicated search button on something like Slash. In this case, the instant you start typing, it is going to start doing a search. In this case, it's the music folder, and we don't have to press anything else to go and like, you know, save the search or something like that. If I start moving around with my arrow keys or I press enter or click on something, it is going to retain the search. 
then we go into that folder and we're good to go. So this does make it easier if you want to go and like, you know, have part of a search there and maybe you want to like copy something and then go back a little bit. If you then go and backspace, it is going to go and empty the search bar. However, due to the flexibility it provides, I generally prefer a search key. In something like LF, for example, I can go and write GVA and it instantly jumps me over to my anime folder. Whereas here, if we just write GVA, it's always going to treat it like a search. This is why having separate modes is better. You can clearly differentiate the actions the user is trying to take. But one thing it does do well is with random files I was opening. You might have spotted some of those applications it was using. In this case, it's uh, NSXIV. In the case of a text file like this, it's going to be with NVIM and a video file. It's going to be MPV and anything else. These aren't applications I have set in this program itself. It's not using its own custom set of launchers. It's just using the applications that any sort of regular GUI file manager is going to be using, which is kind of weird in the context of a TUI file manager. Most things like LF, Ranger, NNN, and pretty much anything else out there usually have their own custom set of applications. But I don't hate it being like this. If you want everything done in your terminal, though, that might be a bit of an issue. And another thing, there's also a Vim mode. Now, when I say Vim mode, you know, the loose definition of Vim mode you usually see in a lot of applications like this, the way we enable it is with an environment variable. I'm not going to set this globally because I don't feel like doing so, so we're just going to launch it with the application. So it is 2EFI underscore Vim underscore mode, all in lowercase, equals true, where true is capital T, lowercase r-u-e. If we go and run it now, okay, zoom out because we don't see it like this. If we go and run it now, we can move around by using HJKNL like you would generally expect. But how do we do a search now if we are using letters to move around? Well, if we have a look at the keys here, we do it on I. Now you can actually go and disable that automatic searching from before. It's just done with an environment variable. Um, if we go and press I, this is gonna start doing a search. Works the exact same way, nothing special here. As you can probably see though from this uh, bit of documentation here, and then the lack of documentation here, it's still in a fairly early state. And my favorite part of this is how do I change the default colors? Instead of explaining it here, which would make sense and would make sense. They say it is a bit complicated. Just make an issue and I'll explain it there. Why would it be any easier to explain it in an issue instead of here? It sounds like you just don't want to write that documentation right now and you're waiting until someone needs it. Which, hey, I can absolutely respect, but let's just be honest about what we're doing. Also, this currently has a grand total of 45 commits. Yesterday it was 44 commits. And to make that better, sometimes there'll be multiple commits, um with the exact same name. So it makes it very, very fun to go back through those commits to find out where things were happening. But seeing as though the project is in a fairly early state, the dev does have some interesting things they want to work on into the future. Desired features, undo and redo, which would be nice for things like deletion, for example, tooltips, which if they work better than properties do, would be nice. Presumably tooltips would be like hover tooltips, which I hope would also mean you can actually show where in the menu you are currently selected. A scroll bar on things where there is scrolling, multiple tab support, better performance, which I don't think is that important of a focus right now because it does perform pretty well. Effect on cutted files, which I don't know what that means at all. And also, this is the really exciting one, drop files into GUI applications. So this developer discovered an application known as Dragon. Dragon is very cool. I did a video on this 
God knows how long ago. Basically, it's this little GTK window that you can open up from basically anything. And if you open it up from a terminal and you feed some files into it, you can technically send files from a terminal into a GUI. Technically. And that's the best kind of write. Now we can sit here and argue about how useful a program like this really is. In reality, not really. Go and grab a GUI file manager. Go and grab a terminal file manager. They do their things really well separately, merged together. It's sort of the worst of both worlds. But, okay, here's the big but. Like with those other file managers I mentioned at the start, I think it is really neat when people try out new things. When devs are experimenting with really cool ideas, that's when you get these breakthrough applications. This isn't one of them, but it is a really cool idea. But if you want to use it or help out with the progress, head over to the GitHub to find out all of those details. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this something you would ever see yourself using? Do you think it's just a neat little experiment? Or is this going to be your daily driving file manager? I would love to know. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Sinley, Barrow, Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brady on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.